Hey guys, and welcome back to Divine Journey 2. Hello, you're not supposed to be here. <laughs> Last episode we set up this mob farm. I've added two more mob fans in there and expanded out the room a little bit. I still could do with some more range add-ons to take it up to the full 9x9. Nine nine. I think as it is, it is currently 9x6 at the moment. So this could still do with a little bit more optimization. I did add a Ender IO filter in there, but we don't currently have access to the bigger item filter yet. But at least we have this running and it's going to generate us passive resources. We also last time worked through a decent chunk of chapter 9 and also made a bit of a start on chapter 10 which is thermal expansion as well as ender IO. So the goal for this episode is to rebuild this farm and instead of using minecarts we're actually going to switch out to using the ender IO farming station. So the farming station is going to allow us to do automation of crops a lot easier. We can also farm trees with this as well. So we may end up building a few of these things. So I think today there's going to be lots of building. I would like to do this um, somewhere over here and we'll build out a new area of the base for this. But first of all, we have to actually unlock this machine as we don't quite have the ability to craft it yet, but we're close. So to craft this farming station, we need to go through a few different tiers of machine chassis. The first of which is the simple machine chassis. And to make the simple chassis, we need energized dark ingots. So I did go mining between episodes to get some more uh, bitumen for this dark dust. And we'll also need some grains of infinity. And this, I think, is something we'll have to automate. Or, I mean, I guess there is the mystical ag agriculture crops for this. I'm not sure how early we get access to these things. So for now, we can just do it manually and light some bedrock on fire. And once the fire extinguishes itself, we get a chance at some grains of infinity. So we got our grains. We should now have some more dark ingots in here that I cooked up from earlier. And we have tons of refined fuel in here from, actually from the quest reward. <laughs> I noticed you guys were saying that I have tons of unclaimed quests. So I did go through for most of them, although some of these are not really that useful. But most of them have been claimed. <laughs> so now we'll also need a handful more of these thermal expansion machine frames to upgrade them to the Ender IO versions. So while I was mining, I did pick up some more diamonds. We have another 48, which is I think the amount we started last episode on. Oh, there's some more in here as well. Hopefully this will be enough for us. So we'll need some more GP powder, as well as some more RF powder. Actually, this isn't enough GP powder. We'll make more. And the reason for that is because we need some more polished stone, which we'll make into more stone burnt. And we'll also need some more atomic alloy. All of that so that we can craft more machine blocks and upgrade them all to machine frames. And then we can take them one step further into the Ender IO machine chassis. I don't think we'll do six though, I think we'll just do four of these things. Yeah, and we'll leave the rest as the thermal machine frames. And there's our quest. Oh nice, we get some grains of infinity back as well. And the next quest wants us to make the simple alloy smeller, which we we will want to have. Although I don't really want to make some extra machine frames, so I think we will just craft this, just to get the quest out of the way. So this takes one of our machine chassis, just some steel plates, and infinity bimetal gears. Which uh, doesn't look too bad actually. Alright, so there's our simple alloy smelter. We'll definitely be making use of this thing later on. But it's just to get the quest for now. Oh nice, we get the draconic... Uh, wait, already? We get access to draconic evolution? For now we'll just add it to our Akashic Tome, along with the other books I've gotten recently. Actually, it looks like we will be making use of this thing right now, as we need to make some dark steel. And technically we can make it in the arc furnace, but it's cheaper to make it in the alloy smelter. So for dark steel, we need refined obsidian, steel ingots, and energized dark ingots, which is very expensive. <laughs> so I'm going to try and make as much of this as I can, as this is used in a lot of the Ender IO recipes. So we're just going to temporarily place our alloy smelter, and we'll make up some dark steel right here. So while we wait on this thing, let's look at what else we need for this machine chassis. So to make this industrial, we have the simple machine chassis, we're making the dark steel. We need industrial dye blend. So this thing is made from nether quartz dust, that's easy. We need crushed lapis, that's also easy. But we also need organic green and black dye. So we're going to be waiting on this thing a while. Maybe it's worth just to put this craft in the arc furnace and use this for our dye blend. Oh yeah, this is going to be much faster. So after chopping a bunch of trees for some charcoal and getting some ink sacks, we can create our two different kinds of dye here. There is the green and we also need the black. It's weird, you have to actually click in from JEI to be able to craft this thing. I don't know why that is. And with the two organic dyes, we can create our industrial dye blend. But we're not finished there. I think we'll actually need some more than this as well. 
Then with the die blend, we can make our first machine chassis. And yeah, we are short some blend here, so I'll need to get some more of that. Oh nice, we get some dark steel for that as well. So we're just one more machine chassis away. We have to make the soul machine chassis. And for this we need solarium, which actually isn't too bad in this pack. It's just soul sand and gold. We can do that, we have plenty of gold from the excavator. And speaking of excavator actually, I think we'll be moving that thing this episode, as we have about 100 stacks of iron in that barrel over there. <laughs> And to upgrade these things we'll also need the solar tune dye, which is some more nether quartz and organic black dye, as well as some of the brown dye, which is just some slime balls and we'll need some more cocoa beans for this as well. So now we can upgrade our machine chassis with the solar tune dye, and we'll make four soul machine chassis. And this finally unlocks the farming station quest for us, but we're not quite finished there yet. To make the farming station we need a franken zombie, and this is going to be a multiple stage process. So first of all we need a soul binder to make our franken zombie and we'll also need a slice and splice to make the zeologic controller. So we need the shears, oh this recipe has also been changed, of course it has. <laughs> the shears and also the axe. And then we'll need the gears, ah nice we do have enderman heads here. And we have some creeper, some zombie and some skeleton. So that lets us make the soul binder and we can also pick up the slice and splice. Both of these machines though are the upgraded variant so they will take some capacitors to be able to run. Also to operate the slice and splice we need to give it some tools as well. So for now we're just gonna, I just had this already in my ME system so we're just gonna give it this. And this will give us the Z Logic controllers and we'll make a couple of these things for now. One of those controllers we have to craft into a soul vial. I think we only need one of these things since the slice and splice will give us the soul vial back. Hey you. <laughs> You're coming with me. And now we can use that little test subject and combine it with the Z Logic controller. Give it some of our EXP. And this will give us our Franken Zombie. And okay, nice, it does give us the Soul Vial back. I'm going to make one more of these things. So now I think we can actually craft our first farming stations. There's one. And we'll make two of these things. Awesome, so now the default range on these things is only a 3x3. But the higher tier capacitor we put in this thing, the, the more range it will have. Ideally we would take this up to 15 by 15 It's what I was thinking for these farming stations. Alright, well at least the capacitors in this pack aren't actually that expensive. And I think from what I read it's the octadic capacitor that takes it up to 15x range. So we'll have to make two of these things to power our farming stations. But now that we have these, we need a place to put these. And I was thinking over on this side of the base. So I'm going to take some time to try and get a, a little area developed and start setting up this farm. Alright, so I've been doing a bit of building and we have the first two layers of this farm in place. I wanted to make sure this was chunk aligned so we have the farming stations in one chunk. And I also did go and craft the octadic capacitors which do turn out to be 15 by 15 range. So these farming stations allow you to grow four different types of crops. It's basically one for each quadrant. So I think the plan for this top layer here is going to be to grow maybe some trees, some roots crops, and I don't know what exactly else, maybe some cactus and sugarcane, things like that. And then the bottom floor, well, the middle floor here is going to be for our diesel generator setup. So we're going to do probably half aubergine and half canola. And then all of those seeds will be run downstairs into this last room here, where we're going to set up our squeezers and fermenters and a couple of diesel generators. To be able to run, these farming stations also take some tools, so I believe we can actually use Tinker's tools in this. So we'll need at least an axe and a mattock, and ideally we would want to make these unbreakable, so that we don't ever have to worry about the durability on these things. As, uh, yeah, when it's running, it does consume durability on your tools. So let's look into making some unbreakable tools with Tinker's. And to do that, we're going to need a bunch of blank casts, which we can just make from our smeltery over here. And the blank cast is so that we can make the reinforcement modifier and we need 5 of these per tool to make it unbreakable. So to make these tools we're going to do them just full prosperity as this gives the writable trait which adds more modifiers. And we need a total of 5 modifiers to be able to apply our reinforcements. So we'll need 2 hatchets and also 2 mattocks. Now I don't think we need the shears, I could be wrong about that, I think the shears in the farming station is only if you want to shear leaves from trees. But I guess we'll soon find out. But yeah, now that we have our tools, we have to apply our reinforcement modifiers. And now you can see the tool is unbreakable. 
So we've got our tools here for the farming station. The next thing we need to do is supply these with some power. And I'm not actually sure the best way to do this. I think we'll actually invest in some conduit. And I think these farming stations also require water to be able to run. But the plan is to switch out with this soil, which increases plant rate growth. Uh, I'm going to have to craft some more of this stuff, but yeah, the crops will be planted on this just to give a slight speed boost. And in the meantime, I think I'll move over all of these machines to the new part of the basement over there. Oh man, that took a lot longer than what I expected, <laughs> but we have all of the squeezers, fermenters, refineries and the diesel generator moved over. I also moved the transformer over to this side just so that we could keep power in this room. And for now we're just running some HV wire over here. But this wire in here won't be staying long term. I think we'll be looking into some wireless energy transfer pretty soon. And also this weird fluid pipe that's running from the diesel generator from the refinery. That's probably going to get hidden underground and switched out to conduit. But I think all of this should be functional. We have to still hook up the inputs for this though. Uh, which means we have to get the farm running. So I made up some more energized dark ingots. Let's see if we can make some conduits for fluid and energy. And man, I can't get over how expensive these this conduit binder is. We only get four pair. But we have a stack here. That should do us. In fact, we can make a bit more than this. We just need some more gravel. Why not? It's going to get used anyway. Yeah, there's almost two stacks. So for the iron conduit, we need pulsating iron. And I'm not actually sure how many ender pearls we have. One here. Okay, there may be some more at the mob farm. We have, oh, 54 here. Okay, that's plenty. And what like are the energy conduit recipes in this? Conductive iron, which is iron redstone. But I think we'll want to take it up to the, the enhanced version, which takes some energetic alloy. All right, yeah, this actually doesn't look too bad. While I was mining, I did pick up quite a lot of redstone. So we're up to over a thousand here. So we'll actually make a couple of stacks of this. And it's always nice to come over to a machine and see some output full. <laughs> I forgot to put this in here earlier on. But we can definitely make use of this. Just have to wait on the conductive iron. Oh, and I forgot to hook up this side of the grid back up. Well, maybe instead of going through this room, since we're converting down to MV here, let's actually just go over the top of the room. And we'll stay on HV to power this um, mechanism machine room. And we don't need these ones anymore, since we'll be moving the excavator. This is extremely janky, but as long as it connects the power up, we're going to be fine for now. Alright, 30 item conduit, is that going to be enough? I think so, right? And we'll make up some more of the energy, and then upgrade this as well. So yeah, the great thing about item conduits is we can run things in the same block space. So we can just have the energy conduits and then item conduits in the same block. Unfortunately, we will have to do uh, one of these things for now. A little loop around the farming station. I mean, I guess we could technically run it over here and have some facades. But uh, we're not rich enough for that yet, so <laughs> we'll save some conduits and we'll sacrifice a crop block space here. Yeah, so then the item conduit we're going to take to the left here. And the plan, I think, is to have some storage drawers here for all of the crop outputs. Perhaps in the future as well, we can even add some more layers onto this. So if we wanted uh, even more farming stations, we can add another layer. I'm just thinking that'll maybe increase the item conduit cost since we'll have to pipe them into these refiners and squeezers. But I think it's probably it's worth setting up properly the first time, right? But yeah, we will do that. And then we'll put a capacitor here for now, just to be able to have access to power. And we'll hook this up to the output of our diesel generator. Okay, so we got a drawer controller. We're going to put this right here. Ideally, we'd like it in the center. But again, that means more item conduits. So <laughs> we'll do this for now. We'll have four drawers, two for the seeds and one for the canola, one for the aubergine. And all of these old drawers from the other farm, we're going to take the, we're going to reuse these seeds and we'll replace the void upgrades in the new ones. Make sure to lock the new drawers. And I think just to transfer them all over, we'll just item conduit into this drawer controller and then we don't have to use these drawers anymore. And you know what? This also means that we can start tearing down this part of the farm and we can also repurpose this aqueous soil as I believe we can craft it into the salic soil that we need. Yeah, we can just shapeless craft this into elemental soil, craft the elemental soil into the salic soil that we need. So, goodbye farm. <laughs> Oh man, we're three short. <laughs> okay, let's just get some seeds in here and get these farms going. So we'll do two quadrants for aubergine, lock those in, and two for canola. All right, we have the farm up and running, but I noticed that some of these are actually popping off the, the soil. I don't really know why that is. It probably is because of the water. What sort of options do we have for infinite water sources in this pack? I did see this thing up here, the unending bowl from Roots. 
which takes some dark steel and the endervoir. Okay, and how do we make the endervoir? This is a mortar, dugonia, water bottle, teramos. Oh, this is a very easy craft. At some point soon, I would also like to build us a little roots area. Maybe have it like nature themed and we'll have like roots and trees everywhere. That could look really cool. Because I do believe that we need to automate this pyre for things like charged stone later on. Alright, so there is our endervoir. And I think we need four of these things. Alright, and then we craft with some dark steel to make the unending bowl. And I'm also going to make up some more filters for the ender IO conduits. And we'll also need to make up some fluid conduits, which take, uh, well, the basic ones are quite easy. It's just some quite clear glass, which you just have to alloy smelt glass into, well, clear glass. <laughs> to upgrade them, though, we do need fused quartz, which is also quite easy, actually. But we are running quite low on quartz. I don't know if it's necessary, though. We'll see. Yeah, so I've run the conduit all the way underground here, which connects to our drawer controller over there. So we'll need to set some filters on this. So in the squeezer, we want to filter in all of the seeds. Well, the aubergine and the canola seeds. And on the fermenter, we want to set the filter for canola and the aubergine plants. And now we can see that our squeezer and fermenter are filling up with their required items. We do actually still have to hook up some power for these things. And to do the power for these things, I was actually going to use conduits, but... Why not just use the immersive engineering wires, as it's going to be much cheaper. And the MV throughput is going to be plenty for the squeezer, the fermenter, and the refinery. And we'll need to be careful not to hook up to this line, as this is a HV line. So we'll put a, a separate MV connector on the capacitor here, on the output of the diesel generator. And then once we hook up to this relay here, all of these should start filling with power, yep. Nice, and we're getting our biodiesel in this tank. Which was already full when I moved it over, which is how the generator has been running while I was transferring all of this stuff over. Actually, you know what? I don't even know if we need water on on this. It may be because it had a tiny bit of water in it and then it did run out, but none of the plants seem to be uh, popping off anymore. And I haven't hooked up the water yet. I was just about to do that. Yeah, I don't know. We'll keep an eye on it, I guess. And I realised that actually we probably don't want to be using void upgrades here. The farming station will just stop if it doesn't have any output space. Compared to the minecarts over there where the elemental soil kept popping off the crops. So if we didn't use void upgrades over there, we would end up with a bunch of item entities on the floor. Which is obviously not great. And we need to do something about those mobs pretty soon. But yeah, having a look at the speed on this thing, it's way, way faster than what we were using before. And in fact, I think we can even support up to four diesel generators. I'm not sure on the exact numbers on that. I would have to double check, but we can definitely support more than the one we currently have. But before we look at adding some more diesel generators, I've taken some time, added some more drawer capacity, and I've also set up the, th the second layer of the farm. And up here we have cactus, sugarcane, uh, industrial hemp, and we're growing trees here. And actually thinking about it some more, we probably don't need the hemp here, since we have uh, string coming from our mob spawner. So that'll probably get switched out. And at some point, probably all of these crops will get switched out with something else, just uh, depending on what we need at the time. But yeah, this thing is running very nicely. So next up, I would like to move over our excavator, as I mentioned before. And you guys said I could actually get osmium from this. So ideally, we would like to look for an osmium vein near here. But yeah, 94 stacks of iron. <laughs> I don't think we need any more iron for the time being, at least. Let's actually just throw this through the ore processing. So to be able to find osmium, we'll need to take some more core samples. The capacitor that was using before I reused, so I'll have to make another one here. All right, we'll need to fill up the capacitor. I've just hooked up to the, the end of the other one. And I know that we can actually upgrade these things now. Man, is this, <laughs> this generator is so loud. I know that we can upgrade these capacitors into the mechanism ones, and then I think we can even upgrade these further. Oh, we can even get access to induction providers now. Oh wait, no, we need lithium for this. All right, never mind. Yeah, we can upgrade them to the mechanism ones, which hold uh, 4 million RF. So it's probably worth making a couple of these things. It just takes some Osgo glass and uh, hooking it up to the output of our diesel generator just to store a bit more buffer. And apparently this fluid pipe has stopped working. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why that is. Aha, well, <laughs> that would explain things. We have a missing pipe. There we go. All right, where should we take our samples from? Ideally, it would be near this power generation. In fact, you know what? Let's try this chunk. Another magnetite vein. Oh, here we got a silt vein. I actually don't know what's in the silt vein either. It looks like it's clay, sand, and gravel. I could be wrong about that, but we're looking for osmium. Silver and lead. Gold and copper. Looks like some nickel as well. Oh, we got a copper vein here, which actually could be quite useful as we are running low on copper. But I don't know how long 
we will have to rely on this excavator for resources. I think we will have access to better resource generation fairly soon. I wonder, is the industrial foregoing lasers in this pack? I know that the industrial foregoing is the next chapter for us, so it's chapter 11. I don't see the laser drill here though. Perhaps it's gated a little bit later on. Although this looks like the quarry and it says your first quarry. Yeah, this is probably where we can automatically generate resources. So we're still a little while off that, which means we'll have to rely on the excavator for now. Aha, we got osmium, 38 and a half thousand ores again. All right, let's set up our excavator right here. So excavator is built. We're currently getting some grass and dirt, which is no good. I've hooked up a power connection just through the middle of the room again. Oh man, I hate using these aversive engineering wires, but it's all we've got for now. And of course this excavator won't be staying here. But once we hook this up, this capacitor will start filling up. Yep, and we're getting our osmium. I do really like the look of this excavator, it's so cool. So yeah, this thing's just going to run, give us some osmium passively. So to wrap up for today, I would like to look into the next stages of progression for us. And also just see how far away we are from the crafting terminal, I would really really love to get this. So to get the crafting terminal, we need a formulaic assemblicator and an estimation processor. Uh, the rest of these items we already have, so the estimation circuit takes coated cloth rates and the formulaic assemblicator Oh, we can actually already craft this thing. There's just these estimation processors that we need. And to make the cloth rates, we need some rosin, which I think we get from resin from trees. Yeah, so we'll need a fractionating still. So the rosin we have to alloy smelt with resonant cloth rates. And how do we get these things? Oh, do we have to go to the end? Oh, maybe we do actually. Yeah, it looks like this resonant end ore only spawns in the end. And there's no other way, as far as I can see, apart from mystical agriculture, to get the cloth rates we need. And I don't know if it's been modified in any way in this pack, but there is this quest here, which just requires us to get some Eyes of Ender, which we can get from the induction smeller just with some blaze powder and ender pearls. So you know what? Let's go find the portal. And apparently it's this way. To the west. Oh man, did we really lose the first the first of Eye of Ender? Alright, onwards. So apparently it should be right around here somewhere. And we have the perfect spell for this. Oh yeah, there's the portal right there. So are we going to have enough Eyes of Ender for this? I don't think so. Oh, but the quest gives us four. Awesome. Should we do it? <laughs> are we ready? We're going to do it. How hard can this fight be, right? <laughs> That's famous last words though. Hey, a quest. Nice. It looks like it is standard Ender Dragon. Okay. Oh, what was that thing? Oh, well, it's dead now. <laughs> I have no clue what that was. I think it was Divine RPG. Oh, you know what I forgot here is bottles to get Dragon's Breath. Well, I hope we don't need them anytime soon. Well, that's the dragon dead. And there's our quest. Nice. <laughs> Well, that was a, such a quick fight compared to the last dragon I done. And yeah, it looks like we got this resonant endor all over the place over here. I wonder if we need silk touch for it, or if it's better with silk touch. Either way, we get the cloth rates from this, and we also got the dragon heart for draconic evolution. I assume we'll need a lot of these things. And let's also take the egg while we're here. Yeah, maybe that was a bad move forgetting about the dragon's breath, as it's needed. It looks like for the deep dark here. I think is what this is. But yeah, with that, I think this is a good point to wrap up the episode. I'm going to continue working on this farm, and I'll probably add the rest of the squeezers, fermenters, uh, refineries, and some more power capability for us here. We got our excavator for osmium, which is already up to 9 stacks. And also, earlier on, I realised that the, the drops here were piling up because of improper filtering here. So instead of just set priorities on the trash can as a lower priority, so that we don't end up with a bunch of items. And that will mean that we will void some items. I'm okay with that. I'd rather that than crash the game. So yeah, that's going to do us for today. Thank you again for watching. And I'll see you tomorrow for some more Divine Journey 2.